I'd like you to work now with this resonance structure at the bottom left of the blackboard. Again, I've given you the electron pushing arrows. Try to draw the resonance structure that is suggested by these electron pushing arrows. We redraw using a double headed arrow. We, we draw the original structure, including the electron pushing arrows. Now we look for the initial tail. Here's the initial tail. The initial tail is coming from a lone pair, so we know that we're going to have to remove that lone pair. Now in this case, the lone pair actually was drawn in, so we're actually going to have to erase that lone pair. And because this is the initial tail, we have to change the charge. This oxygen started with a neutral formal charge, and it's losing electrons, so now it should have a positive formal charge. And now we can erase that tail. Now we go to the next head. This head is indicating the formation of a pi bond. So we have to draw in that pi bond. We're in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges. Now we can erase the head. We go to the next tail. It indicates that we're moving the pi bond, so we can erase that pi bond. We're still in the middle of the arrows, so we don't change any charges. So we can erase that tail. Now we're at the final head, which is pointing to, uh, this head is pointing directly at this atom. We know that when the head is pointing directly at this atom, we're supposed to create a new lone pair. By the way, uh, it looks like I made a mistake, didn't I? What was my mistake? Well, I didn't actually redraw the original picture, did I? I forgot to redraw these pi bonds um, over here, so I'm actually about to end up with the wrong answer here. So I didn't follow my own advice. Uh, my advice was, is always to start by redrawing the original picture exactly. All right, well, it's never too late. Uh, let me put this pi bond back in over here, and let me put this pi bond in over here. Again, I really should have drawn those uh, in here originally. I just forgot. I was in too big of a hurry when I redraw drew this picture. Uh, but we should have drawn these in this picture from the start. Okay, uh, so where was I? This head is pointing to this atom, so it's going to create a lone pair. Well, as usual, we're not going to draw the lone pair, but because we're looking at the final head, we need to change the charge. This element started with a neutral formal charge, and it's gaining electrons. So it ends up with a negative formal charge. Now let's make sure that the charges balance. The overall charge in this picture is zero, because there's no charges. So this picture has a charge of zero. Net charge of zero. Now in this picture, there's one positive charge and one negative charge. Plus one minus one is also zero. This picture has no charges at all, and this picture has two charges, but they still have the same net charge. I hope that you know that the word net just means that we're adding up all the original charges. So they both have a zero net charge overall. That confirms that we were on the right track when we drew this picture. Uh, maybe you noticed that I've left um, a little bit of our previous example here on the board. Here are some of the resonance structures from our previous example. I thought it would be instructive to compare these, this previous example with this down here. So what are the things that we can see here? Well, one thing I wanted to point out is notice that um, this is an arrow that's going from a lone pair to a pi bond, and this is also going from a lone pair to a pi bond. But notice that there's two different ways to indicate that you are moving a lone pair. Uh, first of all, if the, uh, if the um, atom is neutral, you have to draw in the lone pair. The atom is neutral, so we draw in the lone pair and um, that shows that we're moving the lone pair. On the other hand, if the atom has a negative formal charge, there's no need to draw the lone pair. You just show the tail coming from the negative charge. That's simply the convention. So both of these arrows indicate that we're moving lone pairs. If there's a charge, we just use the charge as a stand-in for the lone pair. But if there is no charge, we have to draw the lone pair in ourselves. And the other point is notice that in this picture, the oxygen was originally negative, whereas in this picture, the oxygen is originally neutral. Now, in both of these cases, the oxygen was losing electrons, so it was becoming less negative or more positive. In this picture, we started neutral, so when we lose electrons, we end up with a positive charge. But in this picture, the oxygen started with a negative charge, so when it loses electrons, it ends up neutral. 
In both of these pictures, the oxygen became less negative and more positive. But uh, since it started with two different charges, it ended with two different charges. So please remember that you're going to change the charges of the atom that's at the initial tail and the final head. The initial tail and the final head. The atom that's at the initial tail is going to become one step more positive. The atom that's at the initial tail is going to become one step more positive. So if it starts negative, it ends up neutral. Or, if it starts neutral, it ends up positive. That's what it means to become one step less negative or one step more positive. And the atom that is at the final head is going to become one step more negative. The atom at the final head is going to become one step more negative. So if you start with a neutral charge and you become one step more negative, you end up with a negative charge. Uh, we didn't draw it here, but if you started with a positive charge and you became one step more negative, you would end up with a neutral charge. So it's always important not just to pay attention to whether you're gaining or losing electrons, but you also have to ask what charge you started with to figure out the final charge. Of course, we never change the charges for the atoms that are in the middle of the strings of arrows, only for the initial tail and the final head. And once again, since there's no arrows pointing to these pi bonds, we're not going to move the pi bonds around. I forgot to draw these pi bonds in originally, but I should have drawn them in. So now I've got them back in the picture. These pi bonds are not changing here because we didn't draw any arrows going to or from them. Try this problem. I've redrawn the original picture, including the electron pushing arrows. We start with the initial tail. The initial tail is coming from the negative charge, which means that it's coming from a lone pair. But there's no lone pair shown, so we don't need to erase it. Since this is the initial tail, the atom here is going to become one step less negative. It started negative, so it ends up neutral. And we erase that tail. Now we go to the head. This head indicates we're forming a pi bond. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. No need to change the charges for the head. We erase the head. This tail indicates that we are moving the electrons in this pi bond. So we erase the pi bond. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. No need to change the charge. We erase that tail. This head is pointing to the middle of the sigma bond, indicating that we're creating a pi bond. We're at the final head, so we must have to change a charge. The atom at the final head has to become one step more negative, or one step less positive. This atom started with a positive charge, so it's going to end up neutral. Now we can erase the head. And here's our correct resonance structure. Let's check our charges. The net charge here is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. There's no charges at all in this picture, so that also has a zero net charge. So that's confirmed. Try this example. We've redrawn the original picture. At the initial tail, we're moving a pi bond. Erase the pi bond. At the initial tail, the atom becomes one step less negative, one step more positive. This atom started neutral, and it's losing electrons, so it becomes positive. We can erase the tail of that arrow. This head is pointing to the middle of the sigma bond, which indicates that we're forming a pi bond. Draw in the pi bond. We're in the middle of the arrows, so we don't change any charges and we erase that head. On to the next tail. This tail is coming from this pi bond. We have to erase the pi bond. We're in the middle of the arrows, so we don't change any charges. Erase that tail, because we're done with it. Now we're at the final head. This indicates the formation of a new pi bond. Draw the pi bond. Since we're at the final head, we have to change a charge. This atom has started positive and is gaining electrons, so 
it becomes neutral. And now that we've dealt with that charge, we can erase that head. Checking the net charges, the net charge in this picture is plus one. And the net charge in the picture on the right is plus one. Again, please check your net charges on every single picture until you feel that you've mastered this material.